So what we're going to do now is we'll just take a look at um, reviewing some of the data, and I just want to show you some of the tools that you can use to do this. Um, we looked at the property, so if I select an object, you can see over here under properties that it will display the length. So in this case of maybe this, this curb, so if I pick the top back a curb, it'll show me the length of that line. So I can easily come in and say, okay, I got, you know, 510 feet of curb um, on this project. If you pick a closed object, such as this building footprint, it actually will also tell you the area in square foot as well as uh, acres. If you take a look at the surface, so if I toggle the surface back on, we can look at it like we said in, in the 3D view. And what you want to look for is any flags. If you had a flag on the surface, what that's going to indicate typically is that you have what is known as a crossing brake line. So if we were to take a look at the surface, let's say um, right here, where this line ties into the bottom of the curb, if this line was going to the top of the curb, it would cross the bottom of the curb at a different elevation and that would indicate an error in our surface and we would see that with a flag. Now I don't have any in this particular uh, surface because the surface was built um, well. Uh, so some of the things you want to look at are those. The other thing is that it may have a vertical face. Surfaces um, are not, you know, vertical faces like a wall cannot be straight up. So that wall has, top of the wall has to be offset slightly from the bottom of the wall, just so that it has a little bit of a, a batter, even though it may be perfectly uh, perpendicular or straight. Um, surfaces don't, don't react real well to lines on top of lines. So that's something to do with the surfaces. Now, another tool to review the surface is what's known as the surface slicer. I can come up on my quick access toolbar and I can use this surface slicer tool, which is right here. What this does is it creates another view where when you left click your first point, so if you look, my cursor is highlighted down here, it says from and to. I'm gonna drag a line across my site. And you can see as I drag that line across the site, it shows me a cross section view of my surface. So what I can do with this is move it around and I can see what that cross section of, let's say this road would look like. Now, if I left click, you can see that it basically stores that one cross section. I can see my slope. I can see the lines that are, are, that it's crossing. Um, and, you know, verify that I've got, you know, the proper, uh, slopes and other data that I'm looking for, right? So even on this pad, if I was to come in here now and left click, you can see it shows me what it looks like there. And you can see that it's highlighted here from, so, as I kind of left click once, left click again, I can see the different slopes. Now a little trick here is if I left click once and I hold my shift key down, or sorry, my control key down, and I left click again, and then holding the control key down and I keep left clicking, I can kind of create a cross section all the way around. So if I wanted to, let's say, let's say I wanted to see this all the way around through here. So what I would do is make sure that your cursor is highlighted in the from box. And then I would left click here and I could come over here, hold my control key down and left click, come down here, left click, left click and left click over here. And that's going to give me that profile view um, that you see going all the way around that, that project. Okay. So I can just click apply and it will store that. So what I'm seeing now is basically what the slope looks like all the way around through here. And I can come in and zoom in and out. You can always close this down and then start it again. Then the last thing to look at is the coordinate scroll. So if I come down in the right corner, there's this coordinate scroll command. And that opens up this dialog box. And when I move my cursor around, I can see my coordinates as well as my surface elevation. If you right click on this, you can also change and go to surface slope. So what this allows me to do, and you also have to drag this down. So just open that up a little bit more. And I can see as I put my cursor and wherever I put my cursor on these triangles, 
it's showing me what the instantaneous slope is around my site. So here is my building pad, which is zero. So if that's what you're looking for, you have that. If I come over here, I can see, you know, I've got about a roughly 2%, you know, 3% cross slope, you know, coming through my, my road. So if I'm looking for the cross slope in there, I can easily determine what those slopes are. So I can come in and take a look at that. The other thing you might want to do on a surface is to select that surface, go to its properties, and in plan view, what we can do is turn on these slope arrows. So I can go yes to that. Let's turn off the shading. So we'll say no to that. And now I can come in here and I can look to see the slope and, you know, the general slope of my, my surface. So I can see these slope arrows in this case are sloping away from the center line here. Um, over here I can see my slope is sloping into where there's going to be some catch basins on my project. Um, and you can see over here that the water is also, you know, being sloped around. So again, just some tools for reviewing the data um, and making sure that your data is good before you package it up and send it out to the field.